It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, everybody. Today I'm taking a look at a little card game called Gauner Rouse. This one is a deduction game in which there are some crooks hiding out in this building and you and the other players are trying to figure out what rooms they are hiding in, represented by colors and by letters. The game is very puzzly, but it's uh, very small as well. It has just a few components, some cards, a couple dice, uh, a pad of uh, sheets where you're going to take some notes, and that's it. So, let me show you how this works. I'll give you an overall view of the concepts here, and then we'll come back and I'll tell you if I think this is a good little puzzly game. The objective of the game is to find out where the crooks are hiding in the other players' hands and get the most points when the game's over and win the game. To set up, we are going to shuffle the deck and give out the players a number of cards based on the number of players. So for three players, for example, everybody gets ten, and there will be some that are left out, so we'll just set these aside for now. And then to finish setup, we give everybody one of these, and we go around one time with, with three players and roll these dice, and everybody writes down how many cards they have in their hand of whatever combination comes up. So for example, if blue E comes up, well, I'm gonna take a look at my hand, and I would do this, of course, secretly without anybody else looking, and I would count how many cards I have that are either E or blue. So for example, one, two, three, four, and then I have here a fifth card. Now, be aware, this is blue E. It does not count as both blue and E. It, well, it does, but it's just one card, okay? So five, and you definitely want to make sure you haven't made any mistakes. That's it. And so I would write down where blue E is. I would write down a five right there, and that's public, public information for everybody else. Everybody else would also do that. And again, we do that twice more, and so this... Uh, little sheet in front of everyone would start with three numbers, okay? Once that's done, then you start taking turns pro proper. So let me just uh, roll here a blue, and I'm just gonna do this, that's uh, that, so there are four in a blue, and then let's say the third person rolled d black, and I would take a look at my cards here again. All right, I got that one. And I have that one, I have no D's, no, and I have no other black cards, no. So only two there in D black. Uh, I'm writing upside down, which is why my numbers look elementary, my dear Watson. And so it's basically it. And then on my turn, I am going to begin the game proper. I'm going to roll these first. I would figure out how many cards I have of that. And only I now would write on my own sheet. Nobody else. The other two players, which again, would have one of these do not write anything on my roll once the game is, is going. So I would roll that, I would take a look at my hand, I have no green, I have no D, how about that? Um, and so I would put a zero there, and then I get to ask a question of one of the other players, looking at my own board and looking at what they've got in front of themselves. And so I could try to uh, say, okay, I think I have to pick the person on the card. So I could say, okay, I think you've got the... Uh, the white F. Obviously that's a bad guess, and also they would have a sheet in front of them, but then they would look at their card, their cards, and if they don't, they say, nope, you're wrong, and that's it. That's the end of my turn. It is the next player's turn to roll, write something down, and then try to see if they can find a card. If I do get it right, for example, I say green D, then they would look and they would say, yes, I do have the green D. They would circle in on their sheet that they have the green D by circling in a little spot right there that comes on these. Everybody else would cross that out and then I can ask again, either the same person or someone else. And by the way, if I asked them for that, that um, whatever F it was, red F let's say, and, and they did not have it on their sheet in front of them, they should cross out that they don't have it so that we can start keeping track of who's been asked what 
what we know, etc. There's no memory in this game. It's all in front of all of the players, okay? So that's it. Once I've gotten one, I give myself one point up here. And so the game would be over when someone's hand of cards is completely on the table at that point. Whoever has the most victory points on their sheet is the winner of the game. You can also on these sheets, as the rules recommend, you should be crossing out across the edges here whatever is no longer a possibility for whatever player the, the sheet belongs to. So, for instance, earlier in the game I rolled D green and I had a zero because I had no D cards, no green cards. Then I would, on my own sheet, I would cross out the D and I would cross out green over here to let everybody know I no longer have any of those, okay? And um, that would also indicate if we're going by the, by the, um, the numbers on this sheet, and this dot wouldn't be here obviously, that since I had a two over here in D and in black, both of those cards are black. They are not green, and it's not the D in black, okay? You see what I'm saying? And so this is the way that you figure this little puzzle out by putting together the information well, there's a four up here. Once you know there are four dots along this column and this row, so once there's four dots there, there cannot be any more A's, there cannot be any more blue. So that's how you uh, sort of figure out who's holding what, hopefully try to puzzle together the whole thing. Most points at the end of the game is the winner. I think the biggest negative I have to say about this game, which is not, not a big negative, is that it's a real tricky game to wrap your head around the first time. You're gonna, you might have a little bit of a hard time at first understanding what you ought to be doing. You know, just a couple rounds maybe, maybe a little longer. Depends how, how much you like things like uh, puzzles obviously, but things like Sudoku also. The game is, the game almost feels Sudoku-ish. And so if you're someone who enjoys that, then I would recommend you check this out. It, it takes that uh, solitaire activity and uh, uses inspiration from it, I think, to make it into a real interesting game where the flow of information is, is cool, the uh, this push your luck a little bit is going to be there, but then just solid uh, deduction is also a big part of it where you can puzzle things out and go... I have this, you've eliminated that and that and that, you have this card. You have to. And sometimes not, because there's cards missing, right? But sometimes, yes. And that's what I like about it. I like that it's neither all luck, which wouldn't be fun just going, oh, I think that card is green. Mm, yes, and that's it. Or, and it's n nor is it all deduction, like brute force figuring stuff out. You can guess. And sometimes you can get it right. Now, willy-nilly guessing is not going to get you very far, but you can narrow things down. You can make educated guesses. Uh, and, you know, if this person, you are guessing they have, you know, they have uh, A blue, but they could have three cards that are sort of in the range, and then it, could, it might not be A, it might be B, or it might not be B, it might be C, and this person has one of two cards you're pretty sure about, you obviously want to go with that. That's what I'm talking about, figuring those things out. So, very puzzly, a game that uh, that is deceptively small for how much is in the little box here. The components are deceptively simple, and I would recommend it to fans of puzzle games, fans of uh, something a little bit different and unique. I like it a lot. Definitely one to put on your list if you enjoy esoteric games and you want something that stands out from the crowd, but does it in a very attractive package with pretty good artwork and very good components. That is Gauner Raus. Check it out. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.